I would say it's more nuanced than even just simply being a dark journey. I think Fade Routha provides the contrast. He's on the truly dark journey. So Paul's not a classic moral center to a film or to a story, but uh, I think there's elements of his romance with Chani that are pure harder, that are well-intentioned, that don't reveal a you know malicious personality. But I think the circumstance obliges him, like I would guess many world leaders in human history, to become, you know, not what he want, not what he wanted to be. C'est ce que le livre appelait. Et aussi, je pense que le, le film est, est, est plus euh, sombre que le livre parce que j'ai essayé d'être fidèle au désir euh, initial de Franck Herbert que Dune soit un avertissement et pas une célébration. À l'époque, il y avait, euh, quand il y avait, le livre était sorti, il avait été déçu de la façon dont les gens avaient reçu le livre, comment avaient compris le livre. Et, et il voulait vraiment que, que le film, que Paul soit non pas vu comme un héros, mais comme un anti-héros. Donc, il a écrit Le Messie de Dune, qui était comme une espèce d'épilogue pour corriger le tir. En sachant cette histoire, en ayant lu Le Messie de Dune, j'ai vraiment fait cette adaptation-là, en essayant d'être le plus fidèle possible à son, à son désir initial. It all started with the, with the conversations with Denis and just getting everything I could from him of what his vision was. He had said early on he wanted Fade to, to be physically imposing in some way, so I knew. I needed to put on weight, so that was something which changes the way that you walk. And, and then I was doing a lot of, of fight training. Um, Timothy and I had the same uh, trainer in, in Los Angeles that we trained with for, for many months before we met and before we were in Hungary. And his name was Alvin. And then, uh, and then <laughs> Roger Ewan got involved, who's, who was just incredible, who was, who was in that gladiator sequence with, with me. And, and so then he and the rest of the incredible stunt team helped to kind of get more specific about, about the particular fight style of, of Fade. And, and then, and vocally, that really came from just imagining the childhood of Fade and, and uh, what it would be like to grow up with the Baron as, you, as your father figure. À tourner dans, dans le sable, ça veut dire tourner dans le désert, ça, on parle de chaleur, c'est le cliché, mais c'est vrai, ça a été euh, physiquement difficile pour l'équipe. On tra travaillait dans des températures assez extrêmes, ça demandait une infrastructure, une logistique euh, qui m'a d'ailleurs beaucoup impressionné de la part de, de, des équipes locales. C'était euh, extrêmement euh, inspirant, énergisant de tourner dans, dans le désert pour l'inspiration, mais très taxant pour le, le corps. Ouais. I was always in really um, impressed with the crew because the rigs that they had to create, I mean, literally, you know, carrying this equipment through the desert and in sand, which is obviously very not easy to um, have a camera stand on top yeah, of, yeah. you know, but they were always figuring it out and always creating something beautiful at the end of the day. My job was easy. I just got to stand in front of the camera, you know, but I mean, there's a clearly they know how to use the world and, and made it beautiful and captured it beautifully. I appreciate that so much is naturally lit in this movie, and I think Greg Frazier, the way he uses light, and the way he uses light in the visual effects sequences where things would get washed down, blown out mm. um, in, a, in a, an explosion, the way the human eye would only be able to see it like that. I think he's sort of pushing the, the boundaries of light. Even the, our fight sequence at the end, Fade Routha and Paul Atreides, and the way the, the sunset is mm. uh, backlights, back, you know, it makes the scene backlit is extraordinary. So, as in days, a big Greg Frazier, you know, question and shout out there. <laughs>